In my childhood, in my youth, he may have been the most beloved athlete in the United States, and pretty much everyone who has played basketball since he did idolizes him. The one, the only, Dr. J, Julia Serving, is with me here on ESPN Radio. Good morning, Dr. J. Good morning, Greeny. How are you today? Well, listen, if you had told me when I was a kid that someday I would say good morning to you and you would call me Greeny, I would have said, I'm going to have the best life of anybody <laughs> in the world. So there we go. You know, I told a story earlier, by the way, about you today that I don't know if, if I ever had the chance to tell you, but I'm sure you haven't heard. In 2008, when I was hosting Mike and Mike, we had the two presidential candidates at the time, then Senator Obama and Senator McCain on the show. And we, we made it, we didn't want to show any favoritism. So we asked them all the same questions. And one of the questions we asked was, who was your favorite athlete growing up? And Senator McCain said, Ted Williams. And then Senator Obama said, you, Julia Serving. Have you ever had that conversation with him? I have, you know, I've had the, the privilege. Uh, it was actually in 2016. And uh, my family and I and my attorney and, and uh, my nephew uh, visited President Obama uh, in September of 20, 2016. And, uh, you know, I presented him with a, a, uh, a signed Converse shoe, which he, which he, which he enjoyed receiving. Uh -huh. And, and uh, you know, and he presented me with uh, the story of being uh, one of his heroes uh, when he was growing up. And that touched me in a very special way because that, you know, it's not something, you know, people just talk about every day. And uh, it's not something that that happens to, you know, uh, a person regarding a president of the United States, especially one, you know, who had, uh, who had eight years in office and did the bang up job that he did. Yeah, it's got to be something. I mean, it's one thing for Michael Jordan to say he grew up idolizing you. It's another thing when the president of the United States <laughs> says I grew up idolizing you. The great Dr. J is with me. All right, so they put a bunch of stats up here for me, and, and, and most of them I don't need. So the 1983 Sixers, we'll get to today's game in a minute, but I like talking to guys like you about when you played. So the 1983 okay. Philadelphia 76ers, legendarily known as the Fo 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 Sixers, with you and mm -hmm. Moses and Mo Cheeks and... Ivoroni and Andrew Tony and Bobby Jones and on and on. I have said right. many times is not remembered enough because for one season, I thought you were the best team I ever saw. And people, because the Celtics and the Lakers at that time, and then the Bulls a generation later won multiple titles. When people talk about the best teams, they don't tend to mention that. But for one, would you take your chances with that team for any one season against any team that has ever been assembled? Well, of course I would. Um, you know, I mean, I, I grew up uh, idolizing the guys who, who came before me. Uh, you know, Bill Russell and 11 championships in, in 13 years. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, Oscar Robertson, the big O, you know, even though he only had the, the one championship in Milwaukee when he was playing with uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or whatever, still pound for pound probably probably the best of the best mm. and uh you know jerry west uh elgin baylor uh will chamberlain you know I, I i'm never going to uh really put anybody ahead of those guys when i pick my all-time team i mean you know I, I love watching lebron and magic and larry bird and kareem and moses but you know when i was 15 years old i said it's west baylor Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, and Will Chamberlain. Hmm. And, you know, next week I'll be 71. That's still my team. That's my first <laughs> team. <laughs> Everybody else starts with becoming the six man and, and six <laughs> through 10 and 11 through 15. You know, I, 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 you know, I'm one of those guys, one of those principal guys, you know, the principles guide you and your values. So I, so I value that team uh, more than, more than any other. And, um, you know, that's an all-star team when it comes to uh, teams that got out there and, and won the championship. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to beat 12-1. and one. You know, I mean, it, it was fo 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 and one loss uh, to Milwaukee, which was our nemesis, and we, we, you know, we're not that mad at that <laughs> situation. Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to beat 12-1. and one. I think the Bulls were 16-2, and two, and um, they're probably a, f a few others who have lost three games or four games or whatever, but 
you know, until somebody beats 12 and one, they should put us in their number one spot. You guys are awfully good. The doctor is with me, Julia Serving. Let me ask you this. When we talk about great players now, a big part of the conversation is how many rings they have, how many championships. That is such a huge part of the way we identify and uh, judge, value the greatness of players. What do you think of using that as part of the evaluation of a player's greatness? Do you think it's the championship should be as important as they seem to have become when we evaluate a player's greatness? Well, I think ultimately, you know, you have to have the crowning moment, you know, where you're a champion. As far as champion multiple times being the determining factor uh, in team sport, you know, it's a little different than golf and, and tennis. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in golf, you can win you can win a major tournament, and it takes you Thursday to Sunday to win a major tournament. Mm. Uh, and, and basketball, you know, it takes you September to June uh, to, to claim uh, the major. And then you need 11 other guys who are in sync with you, you know, who make it, you know, who make it a reality. Uh, so I think, you know, in team sports, you know, we are, we are groomed and we're trained and, and we're, you know, we're focused on the ultimate prize. Uh, used to be a, a lot more so back in the day than now. I mean, I see, I see the celebration now. And, you know, I remember, you know, I might do something spectacular, but I wouldn't dare uh, celebrate until riding the bus back to school if mm -hmm. we won the game. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't win the game, you just get on the bus and shut up. <laughs> it's like, all right, we got practice. <laughs> we got practice when we get back or we got practice the next day or whatever. There was no uh, premature uh, celebrations. And now there's celebrations. I mean, every play is just like, you know, doing something that, you know, you're trained to do, you work so hard uh, to be able to do. And then when you do it, you know, you got to let out this, this growl or this uh, groan or bump your chest or jump up on the scars table and mm -hmm. wave your fists and whatever. So, you know, I, I guess it's every, it's counting every second of every day and, you know, letting it work for you in terms of how it affects your emotions uh, or whatever. So, you know, guys are winning championship every week, <laughs> you know, based, based <laughs> on some of, some of the reactions and some of the highlights. <laughs> Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm old school and, you know, maybe I'm hating a little bit or whatever, cause I probably had a lot of celebratory moments that, you know, I just, just didn't celebrate cause it wasn't part of my, my DNA. And the ultimate goal was to, you know, win the league title, win the division title, win the championship. So, you know, my experience is there, uh, with the ABA and the two championships over there. And then the chase for the, the title in, in Philly, which was basically a seven year chase. I mean, we went to the to play, we played for the championship uh, four times in seven years. So just getting there four times is quite an accomplishment. Makes it sound a little bit like the Buffalo Bills, <laughs> but but mm -hmm. getting there uh, in, in year seven was, you know, ultimately uh, something that if it hadn't happened. Uh, I think I might be viewed a little differently, but not a whole lot differently uh, because, you know, guys know how to market themselves and sell themselves these days. So guys, you know, guys without rings are doing doing very well and have made that transition from player to uh, former player. And and you can do it. So uh, and the other side of the coin is. You know, you guys, you have guys with six or seven rings who ne probably never played in an all-star game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Robert Horry in that sense, uh, you know, a great ring collector and great uh, factor on uh, winning teams uh, uh, multiple times. Um, probably not on the ballot for the Hall of Fame unless they decide, well, we're going to put you in the Hall of Fame because you got a lot of rings. The great Dr. J is with me here, Julia Serving. And I'm just looking back at your statistics. Your final year in the NBA was your age 36 season. And I certainly remember that season for you. LeBron James is 36 right now yeah. and, and is playing at or at least near the very best he ever has. 
So what do you think of that? When you see these athletes that are able to play, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with all sorts of things, nutrition and, and whatever else that is. But what do you make of a guy like LeBron in particular who is doing what he is doing at the age of 36? Um, I, I, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's a part of uh, the original plan uh, in terms of coming out of high school um, and knowing that, you know, this is going to be uh, the statement for his life. You know, playing basketball, I'm going to be a professional basketball player and I'm going to be out there as long as I can be there and uh, I'm going to accomplish as much as I uh, can accomplish. You know, when I came out of high school, I was trying to be a, a student athlete at the University of, of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I grew three inches and gained 30 pounds uh, while in college. And, and my career path uh, certainly changed from, you know, wanting to study business and go to work in some, some firm in New York. Uh, to uh, becoming a professional athlete and hoping that I can go there, I can play there for 10 years, you know? And, and so the, the mindset, uh, totally different uh, during that time when I got to 10 years, I was like, man, that went fast, <laughs> you know? Huh. So, you know, I signed a new deal. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm at 13 years, uh, 14 years. And the next thing I know, I'm at 16 years and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm figuring I need to uh, figure out what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I haven't, uh, I haven't made enough. I, you know, during the course of my uh, 16 years, I probably, you know, came close to making $16 million mm. or whatever. And, and, you know, spent two thirds of that in the lifestyle. And, and so suddenly the net takeaway was, all right, you know, I got about four to, to, to start my life with. Or whatever he's gonna have like 400 what he's finished and like you said more than that and and also uh it it's not over until he says it's over and you know we look at tom brady's accomplishments and and football guys are going well into their 40s uh and and playing at a, at a very high level the highest level uh possible and in team sport, you can do that. Individual sports is, is a lot tougher. And generationally speaking, it's a lot tougher. You know, you look at when Larry Bird finished and, you know, he was he was in his uh, early 30s. And yeah. Michael Jordan was in his early 30s or whatever. So the norm is, you know, especially for the previous generations uh, to finish, you know, in your, in your early to middle 30s. Uh, so LeBron is a phenomenon. And I, I think I think he... I think he put a fire on the Carmelo Anthony because he said, we came in together, and, you know, shoot, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hobbling up and down the court and this guy's, you know, <laughs> in the ballots for MVP. So he tightened up his game and, you know, got on a nice program and now I see he's, he's playing better. So, uh, yeah, LeBron is, is the new model. Dr. J, it is such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. A happy early birthday to you, as you mentioned. This is coming up next week. It's great to see you. Thank you so much. We'll check in again soon. Be well. Thank you, Greeny. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.